about how useful they are and how great they are in family history research. So I always like to start with a pun, where there's a will, there's a way. Um, but they're very important. Here's me with my four times great grandparents in uh, churchyard in Cornwall, St. Lazy. Um, I have a fairly nice memorial. I saw the little poem at the bottom. I was very, very impressed and excited. I found this stone through wills. I found out they were buried and died in this parish and found this location. They were mistranscribed, miscopied, even to the parish register with a different name. When I found the uh, stone itself, I noticed they had the correct name, the name that I knew them by, and I knew it was the right person. So there I am, reintroducing myself to my family. A will is a really big document for family history, but we need to really understand what they are and what they're for. A will sets out the person's wishes uh, about how they want to dispose of their property after they die. It's the legal process of administering and distributing that estate in accordance with the wishes uh, of whoever died, and that's called probate. After um, later periods, you'll find more people with the will, um, but earlier on, wealthy people more often will be the ones making wills. Many others also, you'll find middle class, trades people, etc. And they run for about the 1300s to the modern day, in the most part. There are some earlier exceptions, but that's where you're most likely to find wills. Probate records are very personal documents. They give you very, very detailed, vivid descriptions, and they're the few chances we get to really understand our ancestors and feel like we get to know them. Who left a will? So anyone with property could have left a will. Uh, the more property you have, the more chance you have of finding a will. Uh, if you have a smaller estate, often you didn't make a will, you just divided the property up by agreement of the family. Uh, the father dies, some goes to the different sons, some goes to the daughter, some goes to the wife. Before 1882, a married woman could only make a will when the husband gave permission. And so that meant, of course, if you have a, a female ancestor who left a will, we know that that document may have been slightly altered by the husband's opinion and approval and if the husband decided he could just ignore the will entirely so that again is one reason why female ancestors need to be looked at with a little bit more interest at that sort of point and wills at this point weren't just made to keep they were made when death looked possible so if you were very very ill you'd make a will just to make sure or if you were going to go on military service or maybe if you were going on a long journey those people who migrated to the US to Canada uh, they would make a will before they went just in case anything happened on the journey they contain all kinds of different information so they have details like the name and address of whoever died their occupation all the property they had the date the will was made the date the will was signed which is going to be before they died details of all their family including sometimes illegitimate children who they may have made provision for and care for and the date the will was proved and sometimes the date of death as well which we added on in addition and there are so many wills that we have on find my past that can tell you a lot more about people in history as well as your ancestors here's one particular famous will and i'm not talking about the name i'm talking about the document william will shakespeare here we have details of all of his property and what he wished to do with that as he passed on oliver cromwell very um uh, large figure in history. Again, he's written this in his own hand. Captain John Smith of, uh, remember Pocahontas and those wonderful Disney films and uh, the history that goes alongside that. We have his will too. William Penn of Pennsylvania. All of the detail that tells you more about their personality and their lives. Admiral Nelson. And if we look at this, let's get a bit more uh, detailed when we see what's inside. So here we have his name. This is the last will and testament of me, Horatio Viscount Nelson of the Nile and of Burnham Thorpe in the county of Norfolk and United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, and Duke of Bronte in the kingdom of Further Sicily. We have instructions of what he wants to do with his body. He wants his body to be buried in the church of Burnham Thorpe in Norfolk. And we can know now if it's actually been carried out, but this is his direct will, what he wants to do with his own remains. Uh, we see there um, a little bit about what he bequeaths to different people. So we see Lady Hamilton, he gives a bit of, uh, bit of money, uh, he gives some property, and we see uh, William Nelson, a gold sword presented to him by the captain who fought with him at the Battle of the Nile, and he also gives and bequeaths to his sister, Catherine uh, Matcham, his sword presented to him by the City of London. And so we know now his sister is called Catherine Matcham. We might go to find a marriage, we might find more detail. Come and sit down if you like him to have a rest. It's, it's, you've deserved it. You've worked so hard all day. Um, and this continues all the way through. These are huge documents. So if you remember Captain Hardy, um, when Nelson died, Hardy was the one to embrace him. And he said famously, 
either Kiss Met or Kiss Me, no one's quite sure. Um, he left Captain Hardy his collection of telescopes and glasses at about £100. So we can see there was definitely a friendship between these people that lasted. Uh, and then who was to know that he will be with him in those final moments? We can find these in a number of different ways. Before the 12th of January 1858, wills were administered by the church, so that's where you have to go. It's a very, very complicated court system. Your records could be in all kinds of different local courts, or even the court of the archdiocese, which could be the prerogative court of York, or the prerogative court of Canterbury. After 1858, the church takes a step back, and we look at government records, and they are administered in something called the National Probate Calendar, which we have on Far My Past. They are in a number of places, but on our website we have county collections for a lot of England and Wales. These are the pre-1858 records, and when we don't have record images and collections, we have things like parish record transcriptions, things like that that can really help and they come from local family history societies. Use our record A to Z, and that will show you what we hold. Type in a county, type in wills, and you'll get to the things that you may be looking for. You can find the A to Z by clicking on search when you're on your homepage and then just at the bottom A to Z of record sets. Search all records, type as you go, and you'll get to something like this. If you ever see those silver arrows on the left and right, always click them. You'll find you'll be able to click until it, the driver disappears, in which case you've got to the end of the record, or you'll see someone else's name. But some of these records can be anything from two to 99 pages long, so there are so many extra details you can find when you click through and you keep adding to this extra information. Our collection is vast. We have the largest collection of wills and indexes online. Our record A to Z, as I said, will show you what we've got. Search for will, also search for probate as that comes in. We have probate calendars of England and Wales, 1858 to 1959, which can be searched by address and name of the beneficiary and deceased. And there's something else along those lines I'll talk to you about in about five minutes. Then we've got county indexes and calendars that help you find those wills elsewhere. We've got wills of famous persons, 1552 to 1849. That's really exciting. There are so many celebrities that we can have a look through the keyhole and see exactly what they left in their family, and that's really quite interesting indeed. And we've got people who were out in India for the British India office. We've got their wills in probate. They often left wills because, of course, they were making these long sea journeys, so it was very important they did so. We have lots of scanned county wills that you can see the original images of, and so much more. In Scotland, we have testaments from 1491 to 1807. These were launched only this month. You may be used to something like this. These are the original books of these wills that were published in about the 1910s and 20s. It's searchable um, just by the surname, and it's in a commissariat, which is a court in Scotland. There are quite a few of them, but they cover multiple counties, and we have no way of really getting to the records that we need. We've been working on this, and we've fully indexed the whole thing. So you can search by name, which you can't search on other websites, other places. You can search by first name, surname, you can search by date. You can search by commissariat, you can look through that way. But also, we've been searching and adding, and we've been putting place and county to all of these records. So this is the only place that you can look for a name in a parish, and you can find the name of that person, and hopefully get that testamentary record. This is the most comprehensively indexed testament collection online. There's about 170,000 records. It covers the whole country of Scotland for over 300 years. And that's released here, and you'll only find it here on Find My Past. In uh, 19, 1717 to 1845, many people invested in the Bank of England, and they had public <coughs> funds uh, in England. And when they died, they were covered in this collection of Bank of England will extracts. If they were stockholders, if they went bankrupt, if they were declared lunatic, they were also included in here. From these extracts, you can explore a lot. You can find your ancestors' names, marital status, executors' names, much more. And there are lots of different social conditions. Don't feel that because it sounds a little bit posh, Bank of England wills, that you're looking only for the aristocrats. There are people who are lords and ladies, yes, but there are servant girls. And there are stockholders from everywhere in the world. People all over the British Isles, people from all over the colonies. Here's a little bit of example. We have here a Tiberius Beale Snyder Martus Esquire. So some of the names get quite exciting and uh, wonderful to see. But 1744, 1760, this was registered. And uh, we could move forwards and back. And just next to this person, we have someone who was cleaning chimneys for a living. So we can see there are the great and the good, but there are also many, many working class people at the same time. As we move forward from 1858, we have probate calendars. So I told you about this. Uh, search from 1858 to 1959, but 
only again this month we released a full search of probate from 1960 to 2019. You won't find this anywhere else either in this search capacity. Uh, and that means we can go further. We can use this to go to the government website, order an exact will, uh, and that can tell us more again about those beneficiaries, details of the person themselves, and that means that anyone up to this year who may have left a will, we might find cousins, we might find relatives, and that can help to build our family tree down as well as backwards, which is really, really useful. It's quite hard to find modern day records, but these are a really great step, especially after about 2007, but we don't have uh, government death records online, we have to go back to microfilm, and that's quite difficult, you have to go to certain locations. We can use these probate calendars, and that might give us the answer that someone that we know has died. It's a full text search up to 1959. After that, you can search by name, search by location, and this is getting better. By the end of the year, possibly a little bit later, we will have a full search by place of death, by more details, and we'll be able to search even further through history. We'll go all the way back, eventually, to 1858. It's going to be a huge collection and it's really, really useful to get you further. When you get to these indexes, you take a look, this is from 1949, but they're the same pattern all the way up to the mid-90s when they moved to a computer system. You see, for example, Stanley Marshall Clallant of 16 Oxford Gardens, Denham in Buckinghamshire, the date he died, 24th of May 1948, at West London Hospital in Hammersmith, London. So we know where he lived, we know where he died, the date he died, the administration was in London. There was no obligation to be in any particular court, it was just a preference, often it was the closest one, but it could be the way you had property or family. So don't be thrown, perhaps if you're looking at London courts, they may be from much further away. And that's why that place of residence is really important, and that's coming soon. And we see there uh, Winifred Doris Cahoe, the wife of James Francis Cahoe. So perhaps that's a sister-in-law, uh, perhaps that's someone else, it may be a friend of the family, it may be a relative, a cousin. Now we've got a name, we know there may be some connection, we can then use that for our family tree. We see the effects of £3,100 and we see the grant of probate 27th of July 1948. We can then go and acquire that will. So here's an example here. This is a distant cousin of mine. My uh, relatives disappeared, I have no idea where they went. And I see they left a will in 1993 on the 8th of June. And I have the names and I see that they have a brother, Colin. And I went looking for that brother. I still haven't found him yet, but I've got, I pretty, think I'm pretty close. When you're looking for modern people, you're looking for people you might want to get in touch with, these kind of records are invaluable. It can give us that information that we can't find anywhere else. So we can go beyond 2007, where death records stop. We can find out what happened to those cousins, those uh, school friends, those people, second cousins, third cousins, when we're working through. And they might have photographs we want to look at. They might have great connections and stories that we can hear too. So, death really isn't the end when we're looking at family history research. Don't just search by the deceased, search by those people who might have inherited things. You might find them in these records too. And we add so many records to this site. Every week there are new records. If what you can't find at the moment is exactly what you need, don't worry. Come back next week and try again. Make sure you're subscribed to our weekly email that tells you exactly what's happening. Uh, next week might be your week. There's someone's ancestor in every single record we put up. And there are so many we put up, absolutely millions. And so these are the places to look to find what you're going for. So my final sort of rundown really is just to say, as I said, where there's a will, there's a way to round things off. Wills and probate can really help to uh, tell us the whole story when we're looking at family history. Uh, they can fill in the gap in a way that many records aren't possible to do. And they give us our own ancestors' personality in a way that we can't see in many other documents as well. So. Perhaps if we have found some distant cousins or someone through a will, we might want to check how related they are to us. And you can use our DNA kits, which here are about half price, £39. It's never been this cheap. Who knows if it's ever going to be this cheap again. This is a fantastic offer and it's available just at the show. We have only a few more left, so definitely get one before they sell out. Uh, make sure they're only that man there or anyone who's standing at that little uh, desk will be able to help you. It's a wonderful opportunity. And then to use all of the wonderful records I've talked about and billions more, then you can take a discount to a 12-month subscription, 20% off only here as well. Uh, there's a code which you can pick up on a leaflet and that is a wonderful discount too. And you can have that just here. So thank you very much for listening in this whistle stop of all of the wills and probate we can think of. Um, there's a lot to take in and a lot to cover, but hopefully with these little extra tools and extra skills, you should be able to go straight away, look at that record A to Z, look for people that you know who've died, and maybe you'll find some extra detail to add to your family story. 
And thanks very much for listening. And I'll hang around if any of you have any questions. But uh, have a great rest of the route stay. Take care.